it is the touchline here on Y244 and it is that time for the fun zone, your fan favorite, where we talk about some of the biggest matches that are coming up. And joining me to discuss that is Ken Andrews, who is here with me for the touchline. And also, after some time, Eric Aganya is also back. Eric, we start with you. How are you doing, my brother? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. Yes. How about you? I'm doing great. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you can see, man, you're a bit uh, <laughs> uh, growing fat, man. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Struggling here. Yeah. So, yes. But we, we, we thank God. Yeah. The big uh, question will be, what has been your highlight of the week when it comes to sports? I don't think it has been an, uh, a highlight as such. <laughs> yes. It has been a trolling of the week throughout the week. <laughs> After Manchester United were, were, were hit by Man City 6-3. Yes. I think it has been a tough week for me as a, as a Manchester United fan. Mm -hmm. Because online, uh, <laughs> they have, uh, it's crazy there. Drawn all over. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, but uh, basically, in the week we've been uh, working also in the community. Yes. In Kaha West mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, MCA, yeah. uh, Dr. Clement Kamaru, who is really working so hard to improve uh, sports in mm -hmm. Kaha West yeah. and uh, for the youth activities. Mm -hmm and to highlight the talents of, uh, of young people in Kaha West. Yes. So that is basically what I've been doing throughout the week. Yeah. And uh, we, we are committed to that course. Wow. Yes. That's a big uh, improvement for us there, and we'll see how he'll be going to work. We need to talk to him. And he yes, yes, yes. Actually, we, we need to bring him here because yes. he's, a, he's, a, he's a guy who is really passionate about uh, the young people. Yes. He's a guy who is, uh, really wants to, to support mm -hmm. uh, the people of Kaha West. Yes. And uh, we want to bring in a leadership whereby the community, together with the leaders, yes. uh, they forge a way forward to create employment opportunities for young people. Yeah. There's a field there we want to convert it into a camp Toyoyo style uh -huh, uh, yes. because I think that will uh, attract so many sponsors and uh, improve uh, the economy of the area. Yeah. So through Dr. Clement uh, Kamaru, I think uh, Kaha West are in good hands yeah. and I think we should bring him here one of these fine days. Well, we'll yes, yes. work on that and uh, we talk about this new leadership and what they are going to do actually. Talking about leadership, I yes. what are your thoughts <laughs> when it comes to the CS nominee uh, for sports, Ababu Namwamba? What, what are your thoughts about uh, him if he gets that chance to be the next uh, cabinet secretary for sports? I, I think if he gets the chance to, to do it, uh, I think he'll, be, he'll do a better job than... Uh, his predecessor yes because uh, i want to say his predecessor maybe had no interest so much interest in sports mm -hmm. but uh, ababu being young i'm um, being optimistic yes. him being young mm -hmm. and uh, him being passionate about sports i think he will have to to to, to do some policy changes yes uh, and also to inject new blood into 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 sports industry in this country yeah. so i'm really optimistic yes. unless now he disappoints us but uh, i'm <laughs> optimistic that uh, yes. he, will, he will do better than the, his his predecessor yes yes well a big one for sports there we, we are the vetting now will uh, be coming our way soon the public has also been invited to send in their views considering the vetting and Hopefully, we'll get a new CS from next month. We'll be working on in the sports docket. Let's come back to Fan Zone. Uh, Ken, let, that's where we kick off. Before we go international, we have to talk about our very own John Obimikel coming on to his uh, retirement. One of the greatest African players. Where do you rate uh, John Obimikel? I think, uh, especially under Mourinho, uh, yes. the, his second stint uh, mm -hmm. in, from 2014, I think. Yes. Obi Mikel was really, really good at that time. Mm -hmm. And also for Nigeria in the World Cups, he's been a really, really crucial part of their midfield because, mm -hmm. you know, he had the tenacity. He was really mm -hmm. a Mourinho style midfielder, you know. Yes. He, he's, he's African uh -huh. and he, he, he wanted to get the ball and to get on the ball and to quickly switch it and play. Mm -hmm. So I think he's had a great career. Mm -hmm. He's won the Premier League, he's had appearances at AFCON, he's had appearances in the World Cup. So it's a deserved retirement. He gave it all out there and yes. uh, I wish him all the best as he retires. A story goes that uh, John Obi Mikel signed for Manchester United. Then uh, after some <laughs> talking and there, he ended up at Chelsea. Is it true? I, I think he was hijacked uh, on the way because uh, yeah. I remember that story yes. very well. Uh, it left some bitter taste in our mouth as Manchester <laughs> United fans because uh, mm -hmm. he was at that particular time, he was on top of his game. Yes. And uh, Manchester United needed, uh, needed a defensive midfielder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what really happened because he came... Uh, Carrington Training Center, he yes. looked at everything, he was happy. He went back to his hotel, 
uh, for the documents to be signed. Mm -hmm. The next morning, he's being announced by Chelsea. Yes. Uh, it, it, I think he was hijacked on the way, but I, I think it could have been, uh, he could have been a really good acquisition uh, for Manchester yes. United because at that particular time, uh, Roy Keane was exiting, uh -huh. uh, the likes of Paul Scores were exiting, so we needed to fill up that midfield. Yes. And you, you, see, you see up to now, Manchester United haven't had a good defensive midfielder. Mm -hmm. Up to now, that is a position that is still uh, yeah. uh, having problems in, on, on, the, on the field. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, he has done well. Uh, he's, uh, he's retired at an early age. If you look at uh, Nigerian greats and uh, African greats, uh, for him being a midfielder, he won, I think, the Olympics title. Yes. He won the youth uh, silver medal in the World Cup, I think, uh, at the under-17 level. Where do you rate him in the African context? When you look at the greats of J.J. Okocha, Roger Miller, Obi Mikelna, where do you put him? Uh, if, 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 if we put him now in Africa in general, yes. I think mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll make the top 10 or top yes. 20 because uh, mm -hmm. we have the likes of Samuel Eto'o, we have mm -hmm. the likes of uh, Didier Drogba yeah. uh, who've done a lot, who've won more accolades than him. Yes. Uh, for both for country and uh, at club level. Yes. Uh, maybe I'll put him in the around number nine, number ten. Yeah. Because uh, we we also have even in Nigeria itself, mm -hmm. uh, he, he 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 may be maybe on the top five. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe on the top five because we have the likes of Canon uh, Wanko, mm -hmm. the likes of JJ Okocha. Yes. Uh, we have the likes of Sunday Olise. Wow. See, uh, catchy. Even <laughs> <laughs> those names. A, a eh? Great score, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. One, of, one of the best scores that Nigeria ever assembled uh, takes me back to '96. Yes. And uh, when they made uh, the World Cup '98 in France, uh, in you France, look at uh, yeah. that squad uh, mm -hmm. with the likes of Taribo West, Taribo West, Emmanuel yeah. Amunike, Sande Olise. Okay, okay, chuk. <laughs> okay, okay, chuk. <laughs> Babangi. Babayaro. That was one of them. I, I remember their game against <laughs> Spain. Yes. Uh, I sat my mom and I told my mom, ah, this when we were watching yeah. <laughs> and I remember that goal by Sunday Olise wow, wow. from almost the midfield of, yes. the, of the middle of the park eh? mm -hmm. one thunderous shot goal 3-2 uh, the World Cup <laughs> is here. let's see what is going to happen and one of the kids in that World Cup for Nigeria will be Iwobi who is actually playing for Everton at the moment and they are going to be playing Manchester United this weekend and it seems Lampard is making a good team out of Everton because uh, so far, since he took over Everton, they have, uh, this season they have not been conceding goals. Their centre-back is communicating well. Iwobi seems to be the engine in that team. Now they'll be going against Manchester United. Will they put a halt to Manchester United's momentum the way City did? I think, I think they can. Because if you look at Man United, they haven't been scoring a lot of goals. And you look at Ever Everton, what they did in their transfer window, they brought in two really good English centre-backs in yes. James Tarkovsky and uh, Connor Cody. You know, and they also brought in uh, Onana in the midfield, you know, to try and stiffen that area of the park. Plus also their fullback, especially uh, Patterson and Mikolenko, they have been really good in defending more than attacking. Yes. So I think Everton can, can stop Man United, but you know, Man United right now, it, it's never in a good place, especially after they lose like that at, at, at Man City. So yes. if they lose this game, it's another crisis at Man United, the last Ten Hag, you know. United have to perform well in that game, but it will not be easy against an Everton team, which is looking really good this yes. season. Yeah. Eric, off camera, before we came on set, you were talking about Manchester United needs to trust yes. the process. They need to trust the process. You look at Arsenal, what they have been doing since oh, yes, Mikel yes. Arteta came in, and I uh, was watching an interview of Jurgen Klopp this morning, and they were saying that Arsenal is lucky to have got a coach who has been given time, but yes, I think yes. even Klopp has been given time. Mm -hmm. Is that what also Manchester United needs when we talk about trusting the process for them oh, to oh, go yes, to the oh, top yes. level? I think off camera we are saying that Manchester United fans, I myself included, yes. we need to lower our expectations. And uh, we look at Jurgen Klopp, before, yeah. before he won anything, he had four, four, almost four years yeah. before he won anything. In his first season, what position did they finish? Look yeah. at Pep, in his first season, did he win a trophy? No. Yeah. Uh, you have to take time to change the mentality of the squad. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think uh, Ten Hag requires a, at least two transfer windows. Maybe the January one and the summer one. Yes. Uh, he will have cleared out 
uh, the, 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 the people who don't fit his philosophy yes. and brought in people who fit his philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the current squad that Manchester United have. Okay. Uh, maybe there are three or four players that Ten Hag trusts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Three or four maybe. Uh, the rest, he's gambling. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's why you're finding that uh, they're blowing off and uh, cold and warm, cold and warm, hot and cold. You see, if you look at the game against uh, um, City. Man City, City. Yeah. Uh, they weren't really overpowered, but they yes. made careless mistakes. Yeah. Is, is it a case of, uh, like uh, also Mourinho used to say, respecting the opposition too much? Is it, is it what United did? Because you look at the players like Sancho, I think, to me, I think it's just a, a lack of experience in the Premier League because if you look at Tyrell Marcel, uh, some of, for him to be hooked off uh, at halftime, half -time. Yes. he made some careless mistakes that he yeah. couldn't have made. Manchester United is not a team that is caught on the counter. Yes. Man City caught us on the counter, I think, twice. Mm -hmm. That yes. resulted in two goals. Yeah. Manchester United is a team that catches people off guard on the yes. counter. So I think it is just mistakes uh, of a lack of experience uh, on the on the on the wing back, yeah. uh, and that's when you saw him bringing in Luke Shaw. Mm -hmm. Luke Shaw, as much as he may not be on form, yeah. but he has some experience in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. He knows that this ball will be placed this way. I yeah. have to to mark this person mm -hmm. because I saw one of the goal. Uh, that Haaland scored, he was being marked by the whole of Manchester United team. Yes. And then there's nobody who has particularly who has particularly been assigned to him. Yes. Because you don't assign uh, uh, Martinez to him. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the height. Mm -hmm. You need Varane. You need. Uh, you see, th there's that aspect. Yeah. Well, Manchester United with the troubles that they are having. But you look at Manchester United. You look at the place where they are. Then you look at Manchester City. You look at the level where they are. And one player for Manchester City has come into that team and let's say changed the team or added some impetus into that team has got to be Erling Haaland. What a player he is for Manchester City. I think he is a totally amazing player because you know in the past uh, I saw I read something somewhere that Pep taught people taught people in the Premier League that playing without a striker who's just a tapping match and wasn't the way to go. But he bought Haaland, who's just always in the box. He can score all types of goals in the box and you see what he's doing. And, you know, you have to give credit to the guys assisting him because everything that De Bruyne plays into the box right now, yes. you know, it, it just looks like Haaland would get onto it and score. Even uh, Maris is on the bench this season a lot, but imagine if he starts the game and he just curls everything with his left foot, Haaland is there to finish. And I think... Uh, he already has 19 goals, so what a signing for City. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> my, my question will be, uh, is this now the best unstoppable team for Pep for Champions League football? Because in the Premier League, you know it's a marathon, uh, to, stops will come here and there, but they look to go, they have mastered the art of winning the Premier League. The thing will be now, when it comes to knockout football in the Champions League, with Haaland, is that the team to beat? If he doesn't do it with Haaland this season, then he forgets. Wow. Uh, there will be no other season because uh, yeah. uh, in the past, you look at two seasons since Aguero left. Yes. He's not been having a, a, a number nine, a striker in number nine. Yes. Now he has a better version of Aguero mm -hmm. uh, in Haaland, who yeah. is good in air, who is good uh, with tappings. He's yeah. also good uh, with his left foot. He can shoot from a distance. Yeah. And I, I saw the other day, he has the capability to pick the ball from the midfield. Uh, you see, that is where, uh, something that most number nines don't do. Yeah. And uh, he has now Phil Foden, who is now hitting top form. Yes. So if he doesn't do it, I think he will have no excuse whatsoever. Yeah. Because he has a balanced team. Mm -hmm. uh, last season, he didn't have a number nine. So yes. we said maybe it cost him the season. Uh, and then the team now, mm -hmm. as Ken was saying, they're playing to Haaland's strength. And, uh, and uh, Pep has, has now reorganized his team to play to Haaland's strength. Yes. And uh, if Haaland is able to, to remain fit, he'll score a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one I can be sure of. But the problem now is, is he able to remain fit? <laughs> look so. at his weight, look at his height. Mm -hmm. Is he able to remain injury free? Mm -hmm. uh, when now uh, they start playing three, four games, uh, three, two games in a week, Mm -hmm. The FA kicks in and uh, everything. Eh? Yeah. Uh, will he play? Uh, will he be able to, to remain injury free? Because if he remains injury free, if he takes care of his body properly, yes. then he will surpass the records that the, the likes of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have set. 
Well, we talk about records, uh, that's where the kid is because he has been scoring left, right and said I think 17 goals now he has uh, yes, in, yes, yes. in all competitions and he's going to look at that. But they'll be kicking off again Southampton this afternoon uh, at 5 actually they are playing Southampton. Another game that you'll expect Erling Haaland to perform at the top level for Man City. Yeah, yeah, I think he will get a couple of goals, but also, you know, as Southampton have uh, the new centre-back, Bella Kochap, which will be a great battle to see between him and Haaland. But I expect City to comfortably win that game. Well, this conversation about Haaland will not come to an end, Eric, because <laughs> I know the way he is playing braces, hat-tricks, oh, and yes. the way they are going. But let's look ahead at some of the matches that will be coming away this afternoon. We've got Bournemouth against Leicester, Chelsea versus Wolves, Man City, Southampton, Newcastle versus Brentford. And then a big game there for us this evening will be Brighton half versus Tottenham. But before we talk about that, we're going to talk about Chelsea Wolves and uh, Gary Potter taking over Chelsea. I've not heard about you because you have not you have been missing in action. You know, the touch, eh? <laughs> what, what do you uh, Gra of Gra Gra Graham Potter, yeah, Graham Potter is, a, is a wonderful coach. Yes. And uh, look at what he's been able to do at Brighton. Mm -hmm. uh, Brighton, they play nice football. They knock yes. around. Look at the way they are confident. Mm -hmm. That confidence for a middle uh, top, uh, middle team yes. is unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the confidence you expect with Man City. Yeah. And uh, if uh, the, the only unfortunate thing about Graham Potter is that uh, I know Chelsea will not be patient with him. Mm -hmm. But if they, they could have given him time yes. and uh, they give him resources, uh, he will uh, have an amazing uh, kind of football yes. at Chelsea. Look at the game uh -huh. they played against AC Milan. Uh -huh. They dominated everything. We've yeah. not seen that in a Chelsea game uh, under Tuchel. Yes. They could defend and win 1-0, uh -huh. but they dominated everything. And AC Milan is not a, is not a pushover. Yeah. So Graham Very Potter uh, is, one of, uh, is, uh, is one great coach. Yeah. Um, Graham Potter there for Chelsea. And it seems that uh, Abu Mayang is starting to pick up his form in the Chelsea outfit. Yeah, and I think uh, if you again you look at how he played against AC Milan, he could, he got an assist and a goal. You know, yes. he was brilliant in that game. It's still uh, early days because it's a new manager for him also. But yeah. I think he's just there. He he looks like he wants to score a lot of goals to prove some points to maybe to Barcelona for letting him go and also in the Premier League. So yes. I think he'll come good this season for Chelsea. Well, Graham Potter is actually a coach for Chelsea now. I think if he wins this one, those will be three matches for him now that he's leading Chelsea, who are likely to be called London Cowboys starting the <laughs> 2024 season. But we'll be waiting for that one. Wolves not performing well with the Bruno Large and uh, speculation there that he might be fired from Wolves. Uh, Wolves are in trouble. Yeah. Uh, in the last, I think, two years, they've had three or four coaches. Uh, since Nuno, uh, since Nuno left, eh? yes, uh, they've had struggles. Mm -hmm. This, I think, their third coach after Nuno left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, that one now uh, breaks the consistency mm -hmm. because each coach and yeah. each technical bench, when they come in, mm -hmm. they come in with the, their new methods. Yes, coaching is just like teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a change of teachers, yes. when you had a change of teachers in school, mm -hmm. uh, you are affected, especially for for crucial subjects like mathematics. Yes, and uh, the same applies to coaching. A coach will come in with, the, with his rules, a coach will come in with his methods, mm -hmm. and then you are coming into a team that have, doesn't have a big budget mm -hmm. to buy. Yes. So the coach wants to use the available resources in the players. Yeah. And uh, the players will take a lot of time to adapt. Mm -hmm. And after adapting, now there's another change again. Yes. So there's another adaption. So you see, uh, they will struggle the whole, the whole season. Uh, they'll struggle the whole season. Well, Chelsea Wolves will be another game. All these games will be actually coming away at 5 p.m. We'll be following them up to talk about them. One game that we have to go to talk about, a big one, will be a very good rivalry there between young managers. Leicester going away to FC Bournemouth, uh, that team that actually fired the Scott Parker now. Bournemouth against Leicester, two teams that are actually in the relegation zone there. Leicester managed to get their first win last weekend. But Brendan Rodgers, can he steer the ship out of relegation, even come back to the top 10 for Leicester? Yeah, I, I think he can, mm -hmm. because this is a, definitely a good fixture for him after getting the moral-boosting win on Monday. Yeah. 
And for him to do it, you know, Madison will be key because you know the type of form he's hit in the season. The whole team hasn't been performing well, but he has been doing well personally. And I think uh, them playing against the Bournemouth team, you know, that, that has also had its own troubles yes. at the start of the season. It's a really good fixture for Leicester and I'd expect Leicester to, to get the win in that game. Well, a big one there. What about you, Eric? Leicester, Bournemouth, big one? Uh, le 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 big one, big one. Uh, but I think uh, Leicester are, are, are starting to redefine themselves. Eh? Yes. Madison is, is, is doing amazing. Mm -hmm. I was looking at his stats uh, yeah. I, I, and I was wondering, why is he not in the, in the, in the England team? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be there because if you look at his stats, uh, yes. uh, you compare with the likes of uh, the people Grealish. like um, um, Grealish, Mount, he's yes. uh, way, way miles ahead. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Leicester will take the day to let, let, me, let me put that talking point for later because England is another team for World Cup. We'll have to defend. <laughs> but this that game from Borussia Dortmund, Jude, Jude. Jude. Bellingham. Yeah. Bellingham. You gotta enjoy the way that kid is playing, and at yes, such yes. a young age, mm. and also captaining Borussia Dortmund, the future is bright for him. Mm. I, I think uh, not even looking at the kid. Yeah. Let us look at Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. And yes. what Dortmund is able to produce in these kids. Haaland, mm. Borussia Dortmund. Yes. Sancho, mm. Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. Look at the confidence they give to these kids. Because when Haaland was leaving Molde to Borussia Dortmund, he yes. was not as good as, as he is today. Yes. Uh, he left Borussia Dortmund having scored 85 goals in yes. 87 yes. matches. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I, look at now Jude Bellingham. He, he, he left, he went to, 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 to Borussia at, at the age of 17. If I'm yes. not mistaken. Yeah. He's now in the, in the, in the English team. And his, the confidence this kid has, yes. I think Borussia Dortmund are doing some, some wonderful, 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 yeah. wonderful job. Well, let, let's finish off the touchline with uh, one game that will be happening at 7.30. That will be Tottenham versus Brighton. Bad uh, outing for Tottenham last weekend against Arsenal, but they got a bounce back against Brighton. Yeah, they have to, and it's a tricky fixture for them because uh, Brighton also brought in a manager, uh, Roberto De Zerbi, because yes. uh, a manager who knows how to create a playing style. He did it at Sassuolo and also at Shakhtar, so it's a bad time for Tottenham to be playing them. Yes. Even though the manager is switched, they already, Brighton already had a groove of playing, so it will be a tough for them. Yes. If you look at Tottenham, uh, they were blunt against Arsenal and also during the Champions League game against Frankfurt, they were also blank. Mm -hmm. They don't look like they, are, they, they want to score, you know, it looks like it's really defensively set up. Yes. They are not being let off the leash for them to go at teams, despite having players who can tear tear defenses apart so you know it's a big one for Conte because now the criticism will be on him if they they cannot score the number of goals people expect, expect them to score with that attack well for you eric let's we briefly finish off this segment brighton tottenham where will you be putting your money well, I'm, I'm banking on Brighton on this one. Uh, yes. Tottenham are still rediscovering themselves. Mm -hmm. They're blowing hot and cold. Yeah. And uh, I, think to, uh, I think Brighton are playing some good football and the confidence is there. You know, yeah. The other kids scoring three goals in the yeah. last game. And the confidence is there, the groove is there. Yeah. So they'll cause Tottenham problems. Yeah. But the, the highlight will be uh, Liverpool Arsenal. <laughs> 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 I have forgotten <laughs> about that one. Okay, but, <laughs> okay tell me. Look, if I put you on the spot to give a prediction on that one between Arsenal and Liverpool, uh, which one will you go for? As I, as much as I would hate to, 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 to give it to Arsenal, yes. uh, statistically, mm -hmm. they're going to win tomorrow. Yes. Uh, I hate to say this, but they're playing good football. <laughs> well, for you? I, I also hate to say it, but I want Liverpool to win. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool, Arsenal, we'll come back next weekend with these two to talk about that one because time is not on our side. We also have another interview with also the chairman of the Kenya Beach Volleyball Commission, Mr. Moses Mbude, is here in studio with us. Let's finish off there for the fans. Till next time, I'm Robert Rosal. When we come back, it will be all about beach volleyball. <laughs>